Alright, how we going boys? Um, basically what we're going to be going over is the Cold EP Juliana's Six Piece Broken Promises Build Guide today. So basically what this build does is it revolves around a seven sided strike with the Juliana's set bonuses. So set bonuses two piece, every third hit from your generators it it applies exploding palm, your full set is your seven sided strike deals the total amount of its damage within each hit. So every seven every strike gives off the same amount of damage and the six pieces your seven sided strike detonates your exploding palm. Which is basically pretty OP to be honest. So um this build revolves around the broken promises uh, ring inside the Kanai's cube, which is after five consecutive non-critical hits, your chance to critically hit is increased by 100% for three seconds. Which, for this build, is actually really, really good. Um, you get some really decent uptime on it. Um, as you can see, I'm not stacking any critical hit chance at all, um, either on gear or in paragons. So it makes it a lot of e very easy to keep this up. So let's just quickly go over the gear. We've got the Lion's Claw, which basically doubles the amount of um, strikes your seven sided strike does to 14. Um, basically, a 50% multiplicative damage increase. So, extra 50% damage straight off the bat. Um, obviously, Ancient with a damage roll, cooldown reduction, and area damage would be nice. But um, you can't get all of them so you're gonna have to make a choice but cooldown reduction is definitely a thing so definitely keep that on there um 10 percent damage in my personal opinion outweighs the the um area damage so 10 percent damage on there um then you've got your fist of az so you've got your lion's call your fist of az your fist of az with a perfect perfect unique roll which is your exploding palm on death explosion was increased by 100 percent so basically damage is buffed by a pure 50% so it does double the damage effectively so we got 50% here 50% there so um, obviously ancient this one doesn't have dex because it was on the I got it while the fist of ass was bugged on the PTR but cooldown reduction you know dexterity um, area damage isn't too bad 10% um, would be better than area damage. Okay, so in the cube, keeping on the vein of all these multipliers here, we've got the flow of eternity, which reduces the cooldown of seven sided strike by 60%, which is basically another damage multiplier. Seeing as though everything on this build revolves around a cooldown, um, reducing the cooldown of that, that skill specifically increases your overall damage. So getting that cooldown as low as possible equals damage straight up no bullshit just straight up damage okay so let's just go over the gear and i'll explain everything else so we got yuliana's six piece obviously so every piece is yuliana's um we've got the boots with movement speed and exploding palm 15 percent because it all revolves around the yuliana set with that's dealt and the damage is dealt through seven sided strike which applies exploding palm with the Madstone, so synergy, all three of these makes sense, right? Cool. Um, so yeah, exploding palm damage on your boots, movement speed, ideal. Um, getting a good movement speed roll, I think the max is 12% on these boots, yeah. Um, secondary res with dex and vit is always good. Um, moving up to the pants, green gems in both lots. Um, dex, vit, Armor's obviously not the best, you'd want um, regenerating health there instead, but I had a bad generator affix that um, sort of popped in there, so I had to roll it for a bit. Um, armor's not the best roll, but, you know, I'll take the armor over a useless, useless skill damage increase, and secondary res. Um, you got your focus and restraints, obviously these are multipliers, and they multiply with themselves, so um, you want pretty much you know critical hit damage max that out max um cooldown reduction on both rings and then you can either go dex dex is pretty nice um obviously um area 
area damage, so you get your area damage buff, um, which is nice as well. I'll explain that a little bit more. Um, Quinn actually made a really good guide about it. I'll put it in the description anyway. And um, average damage. Average damage doesn't scale that well, but it does give a reason to <laughs> basically get a get an ancient version of these rings other than you know increasing your secondary res obviously you want physical but you know you got to take what you can get sometimes um restraint dex critically damage cooldown reduction secondary res um obviously you'd want you know better rolls than what i've got here but it's still not too bad but these basically buff your damage these are multipliers within themselves so really op um we got our gold wrap here with regenerates life per second um, yeah it is what it is I'll explain that a little bit later um, we got Yuliana's heart here with dex fit and reduces damage from elites um, with secondary rats with green gem socket um, dex fit most people put seven sided strike on there but as everybody knows seven sided strike over the entire entire time of the rift clear doesn't actually equal that much damage it's a very minute amount this is verified by Quinn if you want to go watch one of his on his build guide on specifically this itself. He says the same. Um, to give it a bit more gravity, so to speak. But um, I definitely go the elite damage over the over the small single target increase as well. I agree with him on that line. Um Juliana's gloves, Dex fit, cooldown reduction and critical hit damage. Um, with secondary res. Obviously you could roll off the vit for area damage if you've got perfect rolls on the other two but that's going to be hard to get um but yeah these are two different it's not a bad set of gloves these ones so yeah um obviously ancient would be better but you know you take what you can get stats over ancient all the time okay so we got our shoulders usually on a strength with um dexterity you'd want vit instead of all res but you know whatever um area damage and cooldown reduction uh, area damage once again i'll explain that after i've gone through the build but yeah it will make more sense after in a few minutes um yuliana spirit on the helm dex fit and exploding palm damage obviously 15 percent with secondary res once again all this exploding palm damage equals more damage from the seven sided strike plus the combination of yuliana's um and flow of eternity for the speed farming build and yeah so that's why we stack that. We don't put crit because we don't want crit because of the breaker promises. So yeah. Um, I've got an S of Johan as my neck at this present point in time. Usually it's a Templar. It's a, it's a neck that you're going to put on your floor. But I actually do really like it for um, speed farming because you don't need the extra... the extra passive when you're doing your school farming, uh, speed farming, you just don't need it, it's not needed at all. So I decided to go with a bit more utility. Um, it allows me to, you know, when there's a large amount of density, I can, if I get the proc, it really brings it together and makes it efficient. So yeah, it's, I like it personally, and it's, it's, it's actually good in group play as well when you're speed, speed drifting as well, because once again, like, you know, if you're running a uh, Breaking Promises cold EP build in speed farming, you usually run, you know, like a pool barb with three monks or two, uh, two barbs, two monks, something along those lines. And you're usually sitting right in, you're sitting right on top of either a ZDPS monk or um, your pool ZDPS barb. So um, it just adds a bit of utility and helps pull those mobs together. Um, when you're doing solo pushes, like Unity, no, I'm not Unity, either a Hellfire Ring or a Hellfire Amulet with, you know, a fist, a fist passive with decent rolls on it, and, um, or an Immunity Amulet, you know, both viable options. Um, so we've got Gundam Gear here, it's mandatory, you need it. Um, cold damage on it, life per hit's not exactly great, but and neither is the knockback, but you know, I get cold percentage out of it, and that's why I'm wearing this one. It's, it's like the best one I've found so far. So, yeah. Um, I'll go over the gems quickly. You know, Band of the Trap, 67 and 75, it gives you a 37% damage increase, and it's a straight multiplier before any of anything else comes off. So, that's a straight 37%. At this point, it's 30, 31 point, uh, 35.1. 
and that's a straight 35.1 increased damage and it procs itself so you don't need to worry about you know running a coal generator or, or freeze or anything like that or you know cycle and strike with a coal rune or anything like that you procs itself it's just this is self running gen and it's just op as far so you don't need to worry about it um i got bane of the powerful up in here it's a low rank at the moment but really once you get to 25 that's all you really need because you're killing elite so fast in the speed build you don't really need it any higher and you won't use it for anything else but speed farming um, mainly you're only using it for the 15% damage um, the 20% damage buff plus the 15% on the elite so it just helps you know really slamming through these risk quick now this is what this is one of the things that makes this build you know really work and it's these two combined so you got the Boon of the Horder, it's an old trick, everybody knows about this trick ever since Horder came in. Um, so you've got Boon of the Horder with 100% crit chance at, at max rank, which is 50, um, for any enemy you kill to explode in gold. Um, plus when you pick up that gold you get a 30% movement buff, and combine that with gold wrap, and you get yourself 1 for 1 conversion rate from gold to armor so basically as much gold as you pick up is as much armor as you're gonna get so you'll see this toughness meter while you're running around picking up all that gold you know shoot up into the billions and that means you can pretty much even in t10 afk and molten and not even take damage it is really really good for speed farming plus that that movement speed is pretty pretty good as well um so this all revolves around speed so you're moving quick you're killing quick you're picking up legendaries quick you're picking up your death press and you're moving but this is this build specifically is really really good end game for farming keys it's extremely fast um so obviously attack speed isn't something you want right now um losing the decks maxing out the losing the crit hit chance maxing out the crit hit damage Area damage, basically once you get, Quinn did a guide on it, once again I'll link it in the description, but basically once you get more than six enemies around you, the cleave of this is really efficient, like extremely efficient, especially with the changes that are coming. So this is going to become a very valuable stat and it's going to it's going to be really, really good. If you can get a 100% cleave on this, it's going to be really, really powerful. Um, I'll let Quinn explain that and I'll link it in the description. He's got all the math worked out and he'll show you in plain English how to get it done. Um, cooldown reduction stacking at 62% plus that because more rotations of this which is your damage source. Um, cold damage increase just increases your damage of your EP which is proc through your Yulianas and your Mad Stone and your exploding palm basically the same deal. Um, you know this armor increases with this so your survivability you don't need harmony or anything like that. So we'll go on to skills oh, I'll just click on that really quick and just show you the rest so we got you know the cooldown reduction we got the mad stone which applies your exploding palm on every side of seven side of strike and which saves you from having to do three rotations to be generated to get exploding palm up which just makes it more efficient for speed farming and you break promises so on to skills so we got crippling wave tsunami um, extra CC adds a freeze um, it's not really needed to be honest with you all you're going to be doing is really hitting something once so you'll be clicking on the mob once just to proc your focus focus and restraint and um, then you'll be going straight into your seven side strike anyway so you won't really ever use a full rotation of this unless it's like an elite pack or a rift guardian and even then you probably won't use it um, you can go breaking away for an extra 10 percent if you really really want to but you really, really do not need it unless you're like in a full party or something like that. You can use that and in T10, and T10 is the only place you're ever going to really use this at all. Um, we have a hundred, a hundred fist assimilation. It's a straight additive multiplier, um, additive damage increase, and when you're getting up into you know the twenties. 30s, 40s, 50s, even 60s sometimes. Quinn said he got up to 66 or something. That's 60, 66, so what's 66 by 5? Do the math. It's a lot of damage. It's basically like having a power pile once you get up to that point. So that's that. Passive Beacon of Utah. Um, cooldown reduction. Bam. More damage. Faster. Faster damage. Momentum. Extra damage. Fleet footed. Max out your movement speed. Determination. Obviously. Just for the damage increase. Um, 
you got your desert shroud, you know, you're not really going to need inside. Some people run inside, but you really do not need it. Desert shroud is more than enough. It gives you a little bit of survivability that you really do not need anyway. But, um, you don't need any other room. And that's the reality of it, because by the time you get to about here, in your spirit pool, um, the cooldown of this is so quick that by the time you get to there, it's already off cooldown and you're already putting, you're already pressing it again. So this at here is already regening, so you don't really need to worry about dash and strike way of the falling star just for the movement speed. That's all you're doing it for. You don't want anything else. It's just fast. Um, sustained attack reduces the cooldown of seven sided strike once more in half. So you're just getting a lot of value out of it, increasing your damage. Mantra of Conviction Annihilation, straight up for the movement speed and the basic damage buff if you need the active ever, which you really don't need. But yeah. So, we've got that done. Obviously I'm on PTR, I've got a bit of lag, boys, so... Take that for what it will, but we'll do a quick, quick rift. Just to show you how efficient this stuff is. And I'll show you what the Boon of the Hoarder does with the Gold Wrap. Not that you need it. But this is pretty good. Okay, you see the lag, and I'm sorry about that, boys. Um, see, really efficient farming. There's a consumable that I don't really want. I'm not actually going to go for legendaries in here. I'm just going to prove a point that this is really fast. You see my movement speed, and elite packs just die. You don't need to worry about it. Fleeting shrine, that's helpful. Every time you pick up gold, you're getting toughness. You can see the toughness just go up. See what I mean? Toughness, toughness, billions, billions. You can AFK and molten with that stuff. All you want to do is just keep moving around, and here's a perfect path for me to demonstrate on. And I'll just AFK and molten. Don't take any damage whatsoever. I'll take the death press there. Okay, so. Obviously with the Gundo gear, it spreads your EPs and stuff like that. You don't need to worry about anything. One hitting everything. Um, obviously solo farming is not what you want to be doing. You don't want to be solo farming by yourself. It's just really not efficient. You don't, you're don't. you getting way less drops. You're getting way less experience than you would get in you know, T10 or something like that, which isn't much. Because you know, you've got multiplicative experience buffs and um, greater rifts. And that's for another video, but yeah. Obviously, you don't want to be doing this alone. You'd want, like, um, smart loot OP. Um, you'd want, like, a, you know, two monks, three monks, or, you know, two barbs, two monks, something like that would be really efficient. But obviously, that's not the great composition you're going to be getting every time, but definitely a barb with that movement speed buff um, will really benefit this build. Because you'll just, you'll just get more increased increase movement speed which increases your efficiency of each run and not just that you also get um you also get them as you know they run ahead of you or something like that get their rage up and then you come in ep to the elite and they clean up all the all the side stuff really really quick and efficiently but yeah you can see how fast like i cleared that area that with well i got this tile set before in, in exactly this order ironically but yeah, on my last record that I kind of screwed up, I got exactly this order of riffs. Illuminati confirmed, boys. It's, um, I don't know. That's kind of weird, to be honest with you. I didn't expect that. But yeah, you can see, you know, my toughness just shooting up into the billions here without issue. It's just, yeah, you can never die. And if you don't die, you're getting pulls, you're getting all that sort of stuff for your speed runs, while you're getting your keys for your speed runs. Um, and yeah, you're getting your drops, you're getting your gear, you're min maxing, you're doing everything you need to do, boys. So it's like really efficient stuff. Like, I'm not even really getting all that much value out of um, my Lion's Claw right now. In fact, it could even be a thing like when you're running T10, forget about the Lion's Claw, um, put an Ingeom on instead because you really don't need it, but it needs to be ancient. It needs to be worth equipping over an ancient Lion's Claw. Um, so when you kill an elite pack, 
you know, you basically all your cooldowns of all your skills, including seven strike, are you know severely reduced by a lot for ten seconds. And the rate in which you move with an Ingi on prop because you're dashing strike is pretty much like a quarter second between casts. Like you're just moving between you know packs like crazy. So it is efficient. You know, it's a viable alternative to what I'm doing here. But really, you don't need it because the movement speed buff that you're getting from a bub is more than enough to do what you want to do and um, honestly if, you, if you're moving faster than above they're going to bitch you here because they've got nothing to generate their generate their rage on so you don't want to be killing everything you want to be leaving some of these stranglers behind you know what I mean you're going to want to leave a few for the barb if you're ahead and if they're ahead of you they'll leave a few so you can um, you know dash and strike and use your use your epiphany to move through the group and catch up if they need to if you needed to pack it and pick up some pick up some loot and stuff like that so yeah think about your group boys and there's the the efficiency of um the SMP home coming into play it is really really nice like I'm not moving this as efficiently as I would if I was doing this in a group nor am I moving as efficiently as I would if I was playing solo and not doing this guide right now so I'm just trying to demonstrate the build and not be completely efficient I'm just trying to give you an overall understanding of it and why it is so so good but as you can tell like I do have severe lag and I apologize for that um, PTR has been bugging out lately and um, specifically since the hot patch um, I recorded this the night of after that hot patch and like game servers dropping and you can't you pretty much can't do anything on the game servers unless somebody gives you a game you can't get a game so I'm luckily I luckily got hooked up um, by IMVAR and or Chain of Fails so good boys but yeah that's basically the build obviously you can do it a lot faster than that especially if you've got a barb you can do four, three four minute runs with ease with ease no problem at all I actually needed that for my generator build, so I'm really glad I redid this guide now. But I don't need you, I don't need you, I don't need you, I don't need you, I don't need you. Crit hit chance. Crap, crap, crap. Keep you. Crap, crap, crap. Crap, crap. And I don't really need you, and they, s they finally fixed that bug over there. About time. Anyway, that's the build boys, Broken Promises, U6, cold EP, speed farming, really really efficient and in all honesty the only thing you need not to do is avoid that and just max out everything else but if, you, if you're leveling up just max out your movement speed then put everything else in the decks, you do not need spirit and you do not need bit. Um, in here, avoid that, you don't want it any extra above your base is just gonna make your broken promises prop less efficient and you're gonna get less downtime which is gonna decrease your overall damage so you go crit hit damage um, cooldown reduction and then attack speed and then you go resist all armor life per second and then life um, you can go life and there but you're gonna rely on that to regen while you're doing it doing your seven side strike because you regen life while you're invulnerable so stacking it really is efficient um, most people, a lot of people are going for life on here, but it's not really needed. Your area damage is actually much more efficient with the changes to area damage that are happening at the moment. So you go area damage, life on here, resource cost reduction, um, which you don't really need, but it does help with spirit regen, and then gold fund because that's useless as fuck and nobody likes it. Um, but yeah, that's the build boys. Um, hit the like button if you like it, dislike it if you disliked it, um, if you did like it, don't forget to subscribe, um, every every little bit helps, throw some comments down in the section, I'll answer back to every single one of them if I can, um, any questions, comments, you know, whatever, do your thing, um, I'm streaming now, and I'm going to be more regular with that, four days a week, that sort of stuff, so um, don't forget to check out my Twitter page, it's in the, in the banner, and I'll link it in the description as well. Um, my Twitch, my Twitter, and my Facebook. Just go onto all of them. Throw out a like and dislike. No, just throw out a like, a follow, whatever. 
and um yeah i'll see you next guide see you next stream and thanks for watching boys hope you enjoyed it